But we're here. Immortals Tens versus Dire. Game three, this final game, determines who remain. will have a slot in the PGL minor in Bucharest. Eosin, do you still remember what happened the last two games? I know it feels like forever since we watched them. No, I don't. I don't All remember right. anything about this series. This is game Fresh one. Fresh start, then. This is a best of one. What a... In a, in a crazy <laughs> twist of events. Radiant team pick. <laughs> PPD is going to switch things up. He's not going to just do the same old draft. It worked for him the first game. It's, didn't really work out the second game, not against that Night Stalker, so instead they'll go for a Lich, because they actually banned Night Stalker. Ten seconds remaining. All right, changing things up. No Earth, no Earth Shaker. I think PPD Five is a little upset. Remaining. Gonna pick a hero that's gonna make other people upset. Maybe that's how he de-stresses. <laughs> He, he played some Dota or something, and uh, he was talking about how MOBAs have progressed so much. Because to him, the concept of certain things like Manor Burn doesn't make sense. Because inherently, Radiant it's not a rewarding pick. spell for the person using it, right? There's no real intrinsic like value to burning someone else's mana that you can feel. You know, it's not a very visceral feeling like you get from a stun or a good slow or a big damage nuke or something like Ten that. Seconds right. Remaining. So from his perspective, he didn't see that as being a Five good mechanic. But remaining. what he failed to realize is the pleasure that people get from ruining someone else's day. And that's exactly what heroes like Lich does and what Mana Burn does. It ruins someone else's game and that makes you happy. I definitely agree with you. Is this guy serious? Griefing is like the greatest form of entertainment. Yeah, it was some Five idiot. Seconds remaining. Uh, believe me, he got, he got lamb blasted. He got destroyed on social media. So, you know. But I just like to bring that up every once in a while. I, I can never remember some of these, these things because I, I feel like uh, it comes up so often <laughs> for a lot of different reasons. <laughs> so, Spear Breaker versus the Lich. That, that's the one thing I love about Lich is that he's kind of a he's just the middle finger to the spirit breaker, you know, a hero that relies so much on right clicking. That Lich armor feels so good, but immortals are also going to get the puck. Big burst of magic damage and initiation for them. Spirit breaker is definitely the Radiant perfect team immortal back. hero. I feel. Blood seeker. Oh. oh. Okay. Well, oh. blood seeker is the perfect counter to the spirit breaker. In many ways, and it's a, a pretty good counter to the, the puck as well. I think in laning phase, you win that matchup, but I'm not, a, I'm not 100% remaining. sure. If, if Bloodseeker ends up going mid against puck, or if puck Five ends up going mid at all, remaining. could be uh, off lane puck and a safe lane Bloodseeker. Who knows? I, I think that it would be the case if it was a 1v1 Your matchup, but ban. I think we all know how that ends up. I mean, nowadays mid ends up being a 2v2 lane at the start, or sometimes even a 3v3 lane at the start, so, uh, you know. I think with a bit of help, Bloodseeker does have a bit of issue against the Puck plus one. Or Ten even a Puck remain. plus one and a Spirit Breaker charge. Five seconds remaining. Gonna ban away the Nyx Assassin and Ancient Apparition so far. Dire not wanting to get that extra bit of burst with the Ice Blast when they already have a, a Puck. Especially against a Bloodseeker, I'm a little bit worried about a Bloodseeker pick so early. Because I don't feel like that's a versatile enough hero that you can say like, oh, we can, we, you know, you can't run off lane Bloodseeker. You can't, you can't, like, he has to be one or two. Right? So it feels like Immortals have the rest of the draft to make sure they have a lineup that deals with Bloodseeker well. And one of the best ways to deal with them is put pressure on the laning phase. Yeah, that's definitely the case, but what if it's a Lich and a Bloodseeker in the mid lane? What exactly would you need to actually punish that? There's no Venomancer anymore either. 
I feel like Venom Master is one of the best ways to do it. I don't think a puck is going to be the best way to deal with it. What about a, a Viper? Though, according to Bloodseeker Extraordinaire, Jacob Toft Anderson, Radiant a.k.a. Mel, he said Bloodseeker actually wins against Viper. I don't know if I, I fully believe that. I, I definitely don't believe that either. <laughs> It's probably best to go up against Milk's advice <laughs> in all situations. Ten seconds. Oh, it's remaining. still too early to tell. I, I feel like this this is kind of how PPD opens up its drafts. Five it's, seconds it's just remaining. Doesn't really give much away, but also kind of keeps you guessing. I mean, for all I know, maybe they'll do something weird like Jungle Bloodseeker. Ah, oh, that ban away the Jakiro. I was just thinking about that Bloodseeker Jakiro combo. Ooh, that was that was pretty nasty. Dazzle. Dazzle's gonna be picked up by Immortals. That's definitely a counter to to Bloodseeker. Both the heal and the, the general sustain of Dazzle mixed in with the plus armor of Weave, and then probably most importantly, you have a shallow grave to be able to throw on somebody, prevent that Bloodseeker. Five seconds of being able to finish Ten off that hero, and sometimes remaining. finishing off heroes is what keeps Bloodseeker alive in the first place. Five seconds remaining. That's definitely a good point. I think may maybe that you pick a maybe you run this puck off lane then. And you pick a melee core for the mid lane. I think any any melee core with a dazzle is gonna do very well against a bloodseeker. That's true. It still could be safe lane bloodseeker as well though. Yeah, that's true. They have they have options. I mean you have a lich on your team as well, so if you really felt like running it in the offlane, I think that's actually uh, a viable option. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I got it. I got it, Yes, and I, I solved it. All right, you ready for this? All right, I'm ready. It's going to blow your mind. All right? It's going to be a support Bloodseeker with a Zeus mid against the Puck. All right, I'm not convinced, but I've seen the it idea. It doesn't sound like your mind's blown. I, no, but the thing, the thing is, <laughs> this has been done before. <laughs> in fact it was I, I, it was it yeah, was for Ev's team who did that remaining. so they they did, must did know they actually it. do Bloodseeker Zeus remaining. yeah they did Bloodseeker Zeus for Ev was playing uh, offlane Zeus I think and Dire team or sorry carry Bloodseeker and the MP was playing mid Zeus and they they farm up the Zeus they they blood rage him and he just double ults and everyone dies <laughs> Batrider is going to be the choice now for Immortals, so that does look like we are beginning to set our lanes in stone here. Puck mid, uh, off lane Batrider, and unless it's mid Bloodseeker, in which case Batrider can go mid against that. Remaining. I think no matter what you try and match the bat against the Bloodseeker, I think that's what you do. I'm not sure. It's not a bad idea as well. It's a pretty good one. Or have very good Batrider as well. This is going to be an MP Puck then. What is the carry that Immortals needs? I think whenever you're up against a Bloodseeker, you definitely want a carry that can just stand his ground and not have to worry about Rupture. Yeah, there's so few carries that... Um, what was it? Uh, who did this? I think it was maybe Dire versus Digital Chaos, maybe. Something like that. Where they, they ran the... This was yesterday, right? They ran the Weaver against a Bloodseeker, right? Because Radiant it's a natural Lincoln's carrier, and so it doesn't really care too much about the, the Bloodseeker rupture. Uh, we are... Well, not necessarily. We could have Juggernaut mid. Say they, they think it's Bloodseeker mid. So Batrider starts going mid. Then Juggernaut could actually go mid against that, and they could do safe lane Bloodseeker. I think they are actually trying to match the Jug against the, the Bat, remaining. no matter what. And the Bloodseeker against wherever the Puck ends up going. Five seconds remaining. That would definitely be the best matchup they could ask for. Juggernaut's not going to have any issues Dire with uh, a bad rider in the mid lane. I think Jug actually doesn't do that well against a bad rider if you're on the side lane, but if you're in the mid lane, it's actually pretty pretty easy to deal with. And because of that, I, I don't think bad rider will even bother going. Or sorry, I don't even think they'll bother trying to switch up the lanes with Jug Ten and Bloodseeker. Maybe remaining. just go Jug mid and. Bloodseeker can go to the safe lane. If Batrider follows Five him, he can actually just remaining. TP to the off lane instead. 
I mean, you've got Lich as well against the Batrider, which I, I, I feel is stronger than he used to be, simply because Batriders um, rely on right-clicking a decent amount, and that Lich armor really inhibits that, that harassment part of the Batrider in his laning phase. So that, I think that's another thing that could st still kind of secure the, the Bloodseeker's lane. <clears throat> They're going to have a, seconds remaining. the Sand King, Misery, probably playing that one as a four position, which leaves Zai's Five last pick remaining. here. Any suggestions, Eosin? Radiant you got two seconds. Picked. I have nothing. Pugna. Pugna. All right. This is just changing up. Is it? Is this like Zai Bloodseeker and mid Pugna against the Puck? Is this an off? Is this an off lane Pugna? Is this an aggro tri lane? What's going on, Eosin? I, I think this is best run as aggro tri lane Ten Pugna with remaining. the Lich and Sand King. I mean, if you if you get the levels up, that combo is going to do so much damage. I, I don't think anyone can actually survive that. That initial stun coming out of Sand Monkey King. Oh, and the QO Monkey King is going to be the last pickup. It had to be something that was very secure in their lanes. Unless Immortals knows 100% what's happening. I think you definitely wanted a safe laner who is going to be tough to beat. And it is going to be Zai Pugna. At least for now. We'll see if they switch things up. But for now, an offlane Pugna. We'll see if they run that aggro try you were talking about. Or... Maybe something about like Pugna's inherent movement speed that maybe you can play it as more of a solo hero. Uh, I mean, if it, it's most likely Spirit Breaker is just going to be rotating around. So if you just look at the matchup as just Dazzle and Monkey King, oh, I don't know. Monkey King still. Ten seconds. I actually think uh, the best way to set this up is to just lane the Pugna Five with Lich. Remaining. Probably, and then let Misery do his own thing. CCNC in the mid lane and PyCat just sit there solo against the Bat Rider. I think it's going to suck a bit for PyCat, but for the most part, Zai plus the Lich should be more than enough to uh, mm -hmm. dominate that off lane. What if we put the, the Lich with Bloodseeker and Misery instead of roaming around went with Zai? That sounds I like think a that's really perfectly fine duo. too. Yeah. yeah, I think that would work too. Uh, either way, we're just going to keep on guessing until we finally get this game a rolling. Did we have a pause or something? What's going on? Hello? I feel like, okay. It, yeah, it takes a while. <laughs> go, go straight into the game. I would be much obliged. As a caster, uh, it is going to be Fred playing the uh, the Bat Rider, by the way, as you said, MP Puck. And already the rotations out, the early wards attempting to be laid down, but just like we've seen time and time again, multiple people TPing out and smoked up and up running into each other. No wards placed just yet, besides Febby and this mid lane ward, Dubu. Wait, where's their other ward? Did I miss it? Right. Which one are you looking for? I'm looking for... Oh, sorry. Yeah, I did miss it. This Radiant one. Sorry. In the uh, the deeper jungle. Dire, meanwhile. Well, both sides. They want to... They don't want to know where... Or they want to hide their lanes. Like, both sides want to hide their lanes. Battle. Actually, to be fair, I think it's Immortals who really want to hide their lanes. Because... They don't want any bad matchup here. Yeah, I, I feel like it's much better for them to have the Bat Rider against the Bloodseeker. Just because you you just can't put that much pressure on a Juggernaut. They are going to be sticking with Juggernaut, Sand King at the bottom, begins. mid Bloodseeker. And it is going to be Zai coupled right. with the, the Lich, as you were talking about. We'll see how long Lich actually stays up here. I'm sure he's probably just going to base it on what the lanes up end up being. QL's gonna head to mid lane with his poor man shield. Or <laughs> nope, they're gonna do switch row. They see Jug mid. Oh, this is the matchup they wanted. Want that? Okay. Yeah, they're you see a jug. Yeah. This is it. Monkey King versus a melee hero, right? So I think so we were talking about the jug wanting to go up against the bad ride in the mid lane. So this is the perfect one, right? I Look at that. that. That spit does nothing to a Monkey King. He does so much damage and heals so much off of that lifesteal that he's going to be good. Meanwhile, Batrider is forcing back. 
both the Pugna and the Lich while the lane pushes forward. CC and C. He'll have a, I would say, a pretty good time against the safe lane MP Puck. Dubu trying to pull. He's ready here. They gotta switch lanes, right? I, I'm not even sure with the, the Lich that they're gonna be able to allow a Monkey King to go against this Juggernaut. I mean, the Lich armor would definitely help a lot, but... I, I think it's okay with the, with the Lich. It's gonna be much harder to approach him to get the four, your four stacks. Right. Uh, Jinju. That kind of leaves Zai out to dry as he's gonna be burnt up here by Forev. Lane on top of him. He's doing a pretty good job juking and jiving, but he will end up going down for the first blood. Forev does not have a healing cell to keep himself alive against those tower shots, so uh, he'll end up trading his life, but well worth it for the extra goal of the first blood. Right out of the say, it's uh, going to be more difficult to get the Jingu stacks. Kilo gets four stacks. <laughs> I think they have to wait for PPD to hit level two, because once you get level two on Lich, you can probably take Frost Blast and then take level two spin on Juggernaut. And I don't think Monkey King is going to make it out. Kilo getting the full tri-lane treatment at mid, whereas Monkey King and his misery is kind of hanging around. CCNC forced to use his first healing cell. I'll take your tribute. And with already having Tranquil Boots, that movement speed advantage that Pugna is supposed to have in these 1v1s is going to start to dwindle. Mortals are looking great with this lane setup that they have going on right here. Looks like they read the situation perfectly. Got top 3 CS. CCC is yes. really not getting a whole lot. How do they this top four network? Bad. Jesus. Top four network. <laughs> I don't know where Febby's getting his farm, but he, he always finds farm. Yeah, he's really good at spending time neutraling. <laughs> I don't know, like, how it, it's such a simple thing just to take a little bit of break and right click neutrals, but he seems to do it every single time with Night Stalker and gets those. Fast, like pre 30 minute Aghanim Scepter, guaranteed that 20 minute one that we saw earlier. The charge going on to CCNC, they actually have vision over in this jungle area. Now, CCNC has spotted that one and will try to retreat back to his tier 2 tower. But Febby, if he gets the right kind of bashes, will make the commitment for this kill and realizes <laughs> he stepped a bit too deep. We'll TP out and wait for his next charge up. Top lane, Forev's gonna be gone on. Misery's gonna be able to get the jump onto him. Zai follows that up with a nice blast, but Forev, the flames are out. Misery's still gonna try and pursue a bit, but he doesn't have the mana for an extra burrow strike, so that kill will not be easy to get. Mid lane gonna be charged up by Febby. Dubu has been backing up QO already. They're going to go on to PPD with this one. They already managed to land a stun. They'll get the Jingo stack for the extra damage and life steal. QL will stand against High Cat toe to toe. A Ice Armor is definitely helping out, and CCNC, as he was forced away back to base, he gets a pretty opportune TP in, but he needs to actually get one of these kills, and he can't get it. The power of the Dazzle reveals itself against the Bloodseeker, preventing the death on Monkey King, and a big healing wave hit. Now PyCat almost dies with the Jingo stack, plus the hit. It's coming in with the charge. PyCat won't have a shrine to be able to get, so he's dead no matter what. Misery now going to be caught by Forev inside the river with stacks on him. He's going to have to find a really good burrow strike to be able to get out of this one and i don't think he's gonna make it a charge is coming up as well no burrow whatsoever he tries to turn won't be able to do it now is zai gonna get caught as well he gets charged up rev gets on top of him zai has to go for the tp away a bash a bash not gonna happen at least zai is able to get back to safety but immortals are just running over dire now in this final this is starting to look like the most dominant early game we've seen in a, in a while this is Something else. All three lanes winning. 3k net worth in five minutes. This is this is rough. CCNC level two at five minutes. MP just hit level five. He hit level five before CCNC hit level three. That's how you know it's bad. Dubu ends up running into misery. Their attempt in gank is not gonna go so well, especially with the charge already coming in from Febby onto CCNC. The new clans, but no jump from MP. Instead he starts focusing on misery. They just want to control this lane and force the enemy team back rather than potentially over committing and going for a kill. Uh, PyCat has begun to switch lanes. He's going to go up against the Batrider at top. I don't even know if this is going to be that much better for him. I feel like Forev is just that much stronger than he is. And 
even though you can purge off the stacks, I think he's still gonna have a hard time CSing up here. Yeah, with this kind of gold and level advantage, for sure. Look at him. Already forced to uh, use a healing ward. Doesn't want to blow uh, a spin too early. This is rough. I, I, and the thing is, I'll take that as you know, you, this is a lich draft. You're supposed to be winning the lanes. And clearly they're not. Sand King is the only one who can do anything, but all of his cores are just so poor and so under leveled that he just doesn't really have any options. Misery is still trying to make some sort of play at bottom happen, but they just don't have the heroes to, to follow it up. Charging the mid lane, they're going to go for Zai here. QO with the haste. Actually gave them an opportunity for a kill, but Zai is able to protect himself. Nice decrep into a TP out. Top lane looks like Forev did try to make a, an attempt on PyCat, but with the spin, he's going to live. And if he's not careful, Juggernaut may pick up his level 6 and have kill power against the Batrider. And any kill at this point when you're 4k up by 7 minutes would mean a lot for the dire side. I think they were gonna try to kill him before he turned 6. He was gonna turn 6 anyways. But not gonna happen. Misery trying to gank QO, but I don't think this is gonna happen. He's a little too high level. <laughs> QO jumps back to the tree, sees if he can catch Zai. Unable to do so. They do have the life drain, so with the extra hero, they might be able to get this, but the life drain is going to be stopped. Here comes the charge in from Febby. He needs to create space for Kyo or not. Jugu's actually here, so Kyo can turn and fight. He'll be able to get the Jingu, just the shallow grave as him. Just to make sure he doesn't end up going down. Misery with a nice uh, double stun with a follow up from PyCat with the spin. They're actually going to be able to kill QO and almost chase down MP as well, but they're a little bit too slow. PPD in some trouble, charged up right as the new comes in from MP, and they end up picking up an extra one. Two for one trade off in the mid lane. It was, yeah, it was two for one, right? Oh, it's three for one. Sand King, Lich, and oh, Pugna no. all dying for a Monkey King. And the thing is, they're so far behind that. Despite it being a three for one, they only, uh, it's Radiant's only a, a 150 gold swing attack. in favor of Immortals. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Oh, big stack down here though. And yeah, that's something that Zai wants to be able to eat through with his blood raged up blast, but MP doesn't give him much of a chance. Take a Dyer's lot of damage there. Pycat in the top lane, Frev tries to catch him. There goes that spin. Pycat obviously having used the Omni Slash in mid, won't be able to get the kill by himself, but maybe, just maybe with Misery, they're going to be able to get the Burrow Strike. There is a charge coming in from the Spirit Breaker. So that will definitely allow Forever Room to be able to back out. And they'll be okay there. Whoop! Monkey King. Diving in behind the tower, is able to get himself there. Oh my god, what a blast! Pycat just took a chunk of HP out from Dubu's Shadow Wave heal. That was a little spooky. Everything is spooky for the Dire right now. Good look at... Oh, Puck is doing so well right now. MP is going to pick up his blink very shortly. I mean, 700 gold away. And I think Immortals are going to have the gold to really wrap this up. Mid lane, CC and CC guys again. Great flame break pushback for that lasso hit. Immortals might just be able to take this tier 1 tower pretty easily because PBD couldn't even get close enough to give it the Lich Armor. He knows it's too close, so just end up dying. Another victim to MVP's freight train that's running through Dire's side right now. CCNC is level 6 now. He can make something happen. There goes the coil. A lot of burst damage with the blood rage on him. CCNC is going to throw out the rupture, but he's going to be caught by Febby's charge. So, still end up losing a hero. He's going to TP out. Very smart by MP, not risking it. Febby may actually end up dying here. The life drain. Crepify also wears out. So, an extra damage value ends up going away. Top three net worth still tightly held by Immortals, and even that fourth place spot being contested. PyCat sitting at 29 39. And Febby, right on his toes. That is looking really bad for the tire right now. 
PPD is level 6 now though, so they have a Chain Frost to work with. Could prove to be very valuable right now. Smoke up time with a spin already used by Pycat. Oh no. He was going to be able to first to slow him down. Here comes the charge on Zai, actually. He wants to be able to stop that back line while the rest of his team jumps on a high cat. A big new kill and a follow up from QO. Great stun. The chain frost bounces out and ends up going over for Evan to side. So they lose out on that big new. And Zai trying desperately to heal out on Febby won't be able to do so. Q on the back line pops his ultimate. And there's just no chance of rebuttal here from the dire side. Febby going in deep against a Bloodseeker like this, too. He is going to be ruptured up and will end up dying, trading his life for three so far. Dubu actually trying to chase him down. One last shot from the tower. Oh, nice run <laughs> back close. He ran to the tower shot at that last half second of Shallow Grave. Dyer's Ends up saving his own life because of it. Wait, dagger on MP now too. Oh, the stun comes out, but not before the spin by Pycats. They're going to be able to deal a good amount of damage and finish off MP. And CC and C gets there for the final click. Pycats pushes forward to try and catch some extra heroes with his Omni Slash, but won't be able to find it. How did they manage that kill on MP? He threw out his orb. I thought he was going to jaunt to it. So he has a Blink Dagger as well. Did he die during the stun? I think the, the burst damage just came a little bit too quick. I see honest. Oh, CC and C. Jesus. Look at that. That is not a melee hero. That's that's a Luna Glaive he just threw out there. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Kind of reminiscent of the early release of Monkey King. Probably one of the most frustrating heroes to deal with when he has his way. He's gonna run into misery. Gotta be careful, he's double damage still. He's already halfway through that desolator. Oh, Stun with a double damage. MP's there to be able to get the silence as well. Great setup by it. Immortals and going for more. They're actually going to coil up PPD in the back line. Now, QO doesn't have the easy jump down, so he's just going to have to drop in the trees and go for PPD down. Does manage to get the Jingu stack, but stuff ruptured underneath the tier 2 tower. His boy Dubu is going to help him out a little bit. They do have a shallow grave as well as earn charges. Zai comes in, but another big hit. QO immediately stops that challenge with a star. Dire. Are you kidding me? I mean, I guess this is where we see the what mental fortitude of Dire and see how quickly they give up because Jesus, they're being won over right now. Man, this this Immortals draft is something else. How do you how do you fight up against this this Monkey King? Like, Juggernaut just has not has nothing. Rupture. I think that's the point. You don't fight him anymore. You like I said, he's halfway to Desolator. Well, now he has Desolator. You fought him, and that's what happens. He gets a big boost in gold. I I actually think a lot of this game is gonna fall onto Zai carrying the Espugna because it feels like Decrepify is like their only only answer to yeah. this Monkey King. Bebby, Hastrun, him. Ooh. Or maybe a haste rune for QO. Yeah. That's even gross. Grosser. Is that a word? Even more I'll disgusting. <laughs> QO Look at these hopping words. around in trees, making his way towards Ferev. They're kind of using Ferev as bait right now as he pushes the lane forward. Sure enough, Dire shows himself, ends up running the Fetty. QO throws out his ultimate almost immediately now. Kind of misses the Boundless Strike, but they do manage to grab CC and C with a Bat Rider. Pulls him back into the ultimate, and that'll be enough to burst him down, it looks like. a oh, last hit for that Jingu stack. And now QO, feel free to go ham. Dubu's going to be caught by the Chain Frost, but it doesn't bounce back to him. And he's able to stay alive. Pycat's going to be dope underneath the Tier 3 tower. QO gives up that one as Dire mass buybacks now. They feel like they can still take this one. QO's running around with the haste room with the Jingu stacks. And almost one shot CP. Grev will do the last finishing touch to be able to grab him. Now Zai next target up. They do manage to get the Dazzle. And QO is currently ruptured up. So he can't move. Can't right click anything, can't get the life steal. Forever is going to try and push back Zai for QO. And now, as the rupture fades, he's able to run himself away from the Bugna. And looks like he might just be able to live too, but CCNC does have that extra movement speed. But Zai 
He ends up getting bursted down. Now MP to the rescue is going to be able to blow up more heroes. They jump on a CCNC. QO trying to chase down CCNC. Won't be able to get him. Turns and fights Pycat. One more hit. Gets the Jingu stack. Doesn't have the balance oh, so strike, close. but the life seal is going off. He needs to right click something, but doesn't manage to get it. CCNC through the Blood Rage on the Monkey King and managed to get the extra damage to finish him off. And now chases down MP. But a half HP on both of them. This feels like a questionable pass for CCNC. Frost armor thrown on him. Silence goes out. I think he's just hoping to be able to bait MP in a, a kill, some sort of over aggressive oh, death. CCNC, he might die to Febby here. The charge. I think he's dead. Has the ultimate to Dubu with the finishing touch. 25 to 8 now. 10,000 gold lead. The buybacks were pretty much for naught as Immortals continue to grow their lead. Oh man, that one was rough. That fight lasted so long, and how many buybacks was that? That was two at least. Take a look. Yeah. Excellent. Bloodseeker Blood does not have it. And Sand King. King. Yeah. That's brutal. We're 15 minutes into the game, and you had to buy back two people, and what did they get out of it? They got the Monkey King, sure, but at what cost? Who got the Monkey King? It was CCNC, right? Or, no, oh god, it was PPD who got the, the spree on the Monkey King. 813 gold for a Lich. Hey, you can buy a couple more wards. <laughs> I mean, you want to see that on a core for that next item. You want to see it on Sand King for his Blink Dagger. Anybody but the Lich is what I'm trying to say. But unfortunately, that's just the way things ended up. Roshan will be finished up by Immortals, and they'll continue the pressure while Dire hang out in their offlane jungle. And I presume they were thinking about going for a smoke. Not so sure they want to do it anymore with an Aegis on Immortals. The thing is, too, they just they don't really have a way to take these fights. It's so reliant on Misery being able to just jump someone right off the bat. But looking how this game's progressed, like, look at his farm. He's forced to buy two value bracers and not even close to a Blake Dagger. There's actually no way into a team fight. Oh, and Pycat. Oh, he makes it out. actually making a comeback. <laughs> right, not that much of a comeback. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. I just had like a hiccup on my internet. Extreme. Time to move. Holy shit, down this hurt. Sweet Jesus. All right, welcome back, everybody. Sorry about that. All right, we had massive fights breaking out, and Dyer started to make a little mini comeback. Fight went to and fro, and Eosin, you were watching the whole thing. Give me give me a little recap. To uh, I, I think, I think Dyer... The viewers. Dyer is very happy with that team fight. I think uh, Immortals kind of overstepped their boundaries. They had a very good start. They caught up Pycat, but Pycat managed to survive with very, very little health. And because of that, he was able to drag them all into a very, uh, they didn't, it was a very dire favorable location, I guess. And because of that, Immortals, they trade evenly with, with the Dyer, losing the Aegis as well. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Alright, so 2910, 20 minutes in, 12,000 gold. <laughs> I'm just laughing at the absurdity of saying like, Dyer's oh yeah, like Dyer, he kind of made a little bit of a comeback and at 20 minutes in, we're talking about like 12, 10 or 12 or 14,000 gold feet, you know? But hey, you gotta uh, start somewhere. It, it was yeah. rough. <laughs> gotta start the grind. Got a lot, a lot of thousand gold team fights to go through to get this game back in your favor. 
I was hoping to be able to click on Misery and see a Blink Dagger almost complete, but he's still a thousand gold away. I think unfortunately for him, he did manage to be there for a kill or two, but he ended up dying as well. I think everyone met, I think everyone in the Dire actually died except for Zai. Radiance bottom Pike tower doing? is under attack. a blade coming up. Is there any other items? This BKB where is he going? coming in soon. Yeah, where is? Oh, he's gonna cut the next creep wave. Spin it and TP it. Bevy was pretty hot in his tail too. He tried to get that ultimate off as soon as he could, but uh, no such luck. It's unfortunate that we kind of missed the team fight because. That's where you can really see how OP Monkey King is when he's ahead. He hit like one boundless strike, it hit three people and almost one shot of all three. <laughs> well, at least it's only a 6,000 experience lead. At least you can say that. Gotten to the point where Kyo's gonna start speeding through creep waves as he gets uh boundless strike one shotting. Creep waves he comes across, they tend to go on in bottom lane, just an easy TP for him as he finished up his uh BKB. He's uh yeah, he's got his BKB. I wonder if the mortals are gonna try to take a big fight here if he gets caught out. Back away. Misery is so close to his blink dagger. This is what they're really waiting for. PVD is holding on to two smokes right now. They're ready. They want to take a fight. Especially with this BKB now up on the Monkey King, I, I have to feel like the this blink dagger from Misery is the only way they can win a fight. And it's got to be probably a preloaded up epicenter too. That kind of initiation. That way they can try and throw as much damage as they can at that Monkey King in one burst. I don't, I don't even think you can ignore him just because he does too much damage. And, and he's got that AOE of Wukong's command, so even if you're running into his allies, you can't stay in that area once Wukong's command goes out. Oh man, and the, and the worst part about it is, it is definitely true that you have to deal with the Monkey King. And in order to do so, you have to do it through a Dazzle who's gonna be sitting right behind him. But they're gonna go in for this. Bebby cancels his charge on Zion. Get some good information. Brad's gonna keep moving forward though. The uh, Pugna Ward definitely preventing any blink initiation. So. Looks like that'll just be a tier 1 tower push. I mean, honestly, I bet Immortals could go for the tier 2 as well. And I don't think Dyer will contest them for that. Yeah, I think that's gonna be the case here. It's. It's just so difficult to uh, defend your tier 2 against the Monkey King that has a BKB and a Desolator at this stage. I like the fact that uh, Immortals immediately push over to this area. Because I think if you ever do contest the tier 2, it has to be through this rotation through the high ground towards the secret shop area. You can't go through this staircase. It's just way too narrow and way too easy to get countered. I mean, imagine trying to go up that staircase and QO just drops a Wukong span, Dyer's fights over instantly. Is under attack. Yeah, it's structures gonna be hard. Oh, they're Dyer gonna go for a smoke. Scanning. I don't know about this. I feel like this is not the location you want to be fighting a Monkey King in. They're they trying to go up, up that high ground area. Febby is gonna be spotted here by Pycat. Oh, what a quick spin is actually gonna go out. Febby, and he actually misses his initiation, but QO lands his. There goes the boundless strike on a three in the back lines with the Wukong span all over them. Zai very rapidly getting taken out by QO, has the rupture on him, ends up giving up with the Wukong's command, turns by Pycat, went it up with the Omni Slash on top of QO, but probably not the last place you want to be until Misery comes in huge with that epicenter. Cleans up most of Immortals now, but a lot of them being chased away. Febby comes back in, trying to go for MP. Misery chases him out, face shift goes out. MP, can he escape from this one? No, CC and T gets the fast kill onto him, and what the hell just happened, Eosin? That was the, dr the dream fight. It looks so bad for the Dyer right there, but like you said, Misery coming in huge with that epicenter, and I think the big thing was 
they were able to kill the Monkey King without the Grave. They managed to get enough damage on the Dazzle. Uh, Dubu was forced to Grave himself instead of the Monkey King, and because of that, he was, couldn't move with the Rupture. BKB runs out, Epicenter comes in, and the team fight's over because him, the Monkey King is unable to move in his spot. I think he needs Lincoln. Badly. I think so too. Man, I still can't shake the fact that uh, Dyer just won that fight. A 14,000 gold lead. And the, the sad part is, it doesn't feel like winning that fight is going to change too much for Dyer because they're still stuck in the same kind of situation. They're not locked in their base as much as they were. But you know, Immortals is just going to be able to take control of most of the map and continue to just farm, farm away. I mean, they've got most of their tier one still up. They've taken every single outer tower of the Dyer. MP's working on Dagons, for God's sake. Well, if they had a little more damage, they, that, that would have won Immortals the fight as well, because the way that fight started out was QO jumping in, dropping Wukongs in the perfect location, and Boundless striking three people, almost killing them all. So, I mean, if there was a little bit of more follow-up, all three of those heroes could have been dead right off the bat. Behold. I am definitely feeling a little worried for Immortals now, all of a sudden. Like... That really? team fight, yeah, that team fight could be the start of things. I, I, I think like if you give them a little more space, they'll have answers for these these engagements. You know, you, you're gonna have items to be able to pick off a uh, a dazzle before he casts anything, for example. And I think this dazzle is gonna be crucial to Monkey King's success. So, is there anything on Dire? Is there something about like an item coming up or, or something that you feel like is more of an answer to uh, to what Immortals are running right now? I don't think there's anything in specific. They just need more in terms of uh, overall Dyer's damage. And all. They're just gonna go through if they find Dubu here, this is going to be start. They're going to be able to take out the big shallow grave. Use it on himself, tries to go for the TP, and uh, don't, don't, have a, <laughs> don't have a stun. No stuns. Burrow Strike is their only stun. Oh, okay, well. I, I take it back. They need a, they need a Yule. <laughs> is under attack. Oh boy. Things just got real awkward for that Lich. That feeling when you're just like, I wish the old champion was here. Misery actually gets stunned up. Man's gonna get a two man stun here, but baby's gonna be able to get a charge. There's no follow up from Dire. In fact, they're even gonna get PPD caught. I think there's a little bit too close to that line. And oh, wait, now CC and C is gonna be caught as well. He gets coiled up. Spearbreaker pumped back into QO. Damage. One turns to two, turns to three, and uh, Immortals may be just knocking on a tier three pretty soon. They are very fortunate that a creep wave is coming in now. They're going to be able to get a bit of damage. I, I think that they're going to have to be backing off uh, after they take this tower and maybe the range racks. I don't know if they can go for the melee here. That'll be a lane around. Easy melee. Yeah. All right, Dyer. You had your, you had your one little team fight. Cost you some buybacks. You don't really have that anymore, do you? Three and a half minutes still for the Bloodseeker. So, I don't know. I, I think if I'm Immortals, I just go back, pick up that Aegis, go high ground again. I'm not sure if Dyer has anything to stop you because Monkey King can even Dyer's throw the Wukong's command if they want to play an ultra save and they could just take that lane of racks during the Wukong's command. Dyer are scanning. I think Dyer have to contest this. I, I think I think you're right. If they if they get this Roshan, I, I, that's probably the end of the game. A weave, defensive one being used by Immortals here. They are going to be running into Dyer here as they attempt to contest onto Roshan. Jump in for Misery, miss! And Fat Rider managed to force tap himself out of that one. Baby's going to be targeted here, but nice coil set up from MP. Trying to blow up both the cores here. cc and runs into the coil and ends up getting snapped back. Two cores down, and now forever right on top of three heroes with the flames burning. Chain Frost going to bounce around, but not for too long. They look for the final. 
They're going to try and clean up every single one of these heroes. Zai's going to be stopped by the Yule Scepter. They actually have nothing to be able to stop that TP out, so he gets away. The rest of his team does not, and there's not too many buybacks left on Dire. They just simply don't have the gold to support it. Misery's going to use one of them. Pycat is going to hold onto his as the Juggernaut, and Immortals don't even go back to Roshan. They are completely resetting and rehealing just to make sure they are full up for the next fight if it comes their way. Yeah, they want to shine up and then go for the... Yeah, they just want to shine up and go for the Roshan now. 30 minutes into the game, Dire not exactly that high level, so they all revive fairly quickly. The entire team is already up. I think they're going to try to take Roshan a second time now, and I don't think the Dire are going to be able to take this fight. Misery oh, spotted. They need this initiator so badly. Thankfully, he gets away, but not until... Whoop. That was not the Yule Scepter he wanted to use for Hev. Misery still charged up, though. So he can't make it. He cannot make it out of here, so... I don't think Dyer can contest the, the Roche. Not without their big-time initiator. 6,000 network Bloodseeker. You know, with that 1-1 one -one team fight, I actually thought he had a lot more than that. And he doesn't even have a force staff. So his damage output is pretty much not even risking. and Cheese. Team is for our Monkey King. Cheese will be picked up by MP. With one lane of Rax down. No buybacks up for the Dire side except for the Juggernaut. They need some sort of miracle team fight to hold on to this game. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. It's going to start simple enough. Rev attempting to go on CCNC, but a defensive force down gets him out of here. Tier 3 is going to be dropping pretty soon. Dyer begins setting up without plugging a ward out. Rupture, thrown onto QO, up in the trees too, they actually do manage to see him, he comes down, pops the BKB, goes for CCNT, the, the Crepify actually goes out from Zion, managed to protect him, but they had to fuse the play to be able to take that one down. Underneath the shrine though, it's just enough to save until MP in the back line is starting to go for him, Chain Cross goes out for his MP in a base ship, QO's gonna go for Zion instead, but Wukong's command ends up taking him down, and back lines, Pycat's going for, uh, got the Dazzle, gets the Batrider as well, Febby actually charges through, and has to start running himself away, defuse the blade slows him down, so it's QO, versus PyCat now in the battle of the carries. PyCat did what he could, killing three different heroes, three of the backliners, but in the end, he's not going to be able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe against MP and QO. No jump up for QO, so won't be able to pursue PyCat just yet. Spots PPD, slows him down. And MP will <laughs> gladly take that kill with a Dagon. Jumps for PyCat as well, just a bit more harassment damage, giving them the space to be able to take that melee Rax, PyCat being the only one up can't possibly defend this alone. Not calling it just yet, though. MP, one high kill. High kill. <laughs> MP definitely wanted to get that quick, Radiant's silent dragon kill, but uh, instead it'll just be a second lane of rags for Immortals. Gonna play it safe. Ooh, Courier here. Not gonna catch it, though. Does it. I feel like Dire... You know, they really wanted the ideal lane. They, I feel like this was just a draft that revolved around the lanes and Immortals had them outdrafted through and through, read them like a book and laned it perfectly. You can't expect a Juggernaut to do anything against the Monkey King. This game was just won from the laning phase entirely, in, in, in my opinion. 44-16. We go to the closing moments of this game three, which could be sending mortals to Bucharest for the EGL minor. All right. Misery better pull out a five man epicenter burrow strike. Honestly, even if he does that, I don't even know if it's going to be enough. Bottom tower. Found the strike. He's thrown as a stun onto CCNC. Natos preventing Febby, but he does have a BKB, so he challenges. Oh, Jesus, MP has already blown up CCNC. 
45 seconds on the clock. Misery pulls up by the lasso into the flame break, and that's where Febby's going to throw out his ultimate. Trying to deal with that initiator as best as possible. Really great chain frost, but it's going to be dodged by so much. The uh, Juggernaut almost finishing off Q up with advantage to get the shallow grave. High Cat can't really stand toe to toe to him, especially with the Juke of Mastery. He's trying to go for Ev. Does manage to finish him off with the heal. The healing ward's actually doing so much. Zai's protecting him as well. High Cat's living for the time being, but it can't possibly last, especially with QO. So damn big. MP gets some of the other heroes and will finish off with Zai. GG is called by Dyer. And Immortals, they will qualify. The second qualifier in North America versus King's Cup for the Summit. Dyer did go to the finals and won that one, won a slot to the Summit. But the second one for the PGL Minor, Immortals are actually able to take it against Dyer.